In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple gas forge that I use for knife making and blacksmithing. I'll show you where to get all the parts, how to assemble them, and how to use it safely. The body of the forge is made with fire brick. Fire brick is different from regular red brick because of its ability to withstand high heat without breaking down. You can order these online, but since it isn't really cost effective to ship brick, I would suggest searching your area for a distributor. Search Google Maps for keyword phrases like fireplace, fire brick, or refractory. Once you find a location, call ahead to make sure they stock your product and what the price is. The second essential part of your forge is the burner. You can find plans and parts online to build high pressure, high heat burners, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to suggest that you start with this particular torch. It's the Benzomatic Trigger Start Torch Kit. You can buy these in store at Home Depot for about $65, or check the link in the sidebar to buy it on Amazon. Now, when I was building this forge for the first time, in an attempt to save money, I tried using one of these brass torch tips, the kind that you screw onto the top of the bottle, and it just doesn't get hot enough. The Benzomatic torch puts out a hotter, higher pressure flame, and the tip of it is also stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about it melting like the brass one. Additionally, if you don't already have a torch, it's going to be an extremely useful piece of equipment in knife making for things like brazing and tempering. So, you can do it yourself and find the parts, but if you're just starting out, I can guarantee you, I can tell you from experience, that this way The works. torch came with this little bottle of map gas. When it comes to supplying fuel to your forge, it doesn't matter so much what kind of gas you're using, because a bottle this big just isn't cost effective. What I use is a 20 pound propane tank. It's the kind that you use with a grill. And in order to attach the torch to the tank, you're going to need one of these uh, female to male hose adapters. You can probably buy these on their own. I haven't looked for them personally. What I did was got one of these eight foot hose extenders. It comes with the adapter you need and it adds eight feet of hose into your setup. This is all the materials you need to build your forge. So let's get the started. The template for the inside of the forge starts with a 2 inch by 9 inch rectangle. It tapers down at the ends a quarter inch on each side to make an overall oval shape. After you cut it out, trace it to the face of the brick. This is the area that you will cut out to make the forge. The next step is to chisel out the cavity of the forge. Use safety glasses and a dust mask to protect you, as well as a glove on the hand that you're holding the chisel with. Angle the chisel away from your face so the debris flies away from you. The inside doesn't need to be perfect, but try to give it a smooth contour that is as close to a half circle in profile as possible. The first forge that I built was similar to this one in that it used two bricks with a circular cavity in the middle. I cut the hole directly into the side of the circle and it worked fine that way. I forged several knives that I was proud of with it, but I want to make improvements in this one. So I will try to cut the hole so that it leads into the contour of the circle so that when the gas is entering it, it will make sort of a vortex. My thinking is that the vortex, in addition to the oval shape of the forge, will uh, focus the hot gases and improve the efficiency. I don't know if that's scientifically accurate, but my instincts tell me that this will make the forge satisfied better. with the inner dimensions of the forge. Place the two halves together and mark where the drill bit enters the inside contour of the forge's profile. Then transfer the mark brick with a square. This is where you will drill the hole. I used a half inch paddle bit to drill the hole. It took a long time and it totally destroyed the bit, so you might want to pick up a masonry bit and do it the easy way. The hole didn't come through exactly where I wanted it, so I used a round file to adjust it. The two halves of the forge are held together with steel wire. I'm using a thinner bricks, one on each side to help improve the insulation. Be sure that you wire the two halves together securely. Over time, cracks will form in the brick, but as long as it doesn't fall apart, it doesn't seem to affect the performance. Use eight or so ties across the width and one or two across the length. I also use some heavier wire to put a handle on it so that it's easier to carry around. 
I made a simple stand for the torch to keep it upright so that it doesn't accidentally get kicked over. Okay, in this system there are three controls. The first is the valve on top of the tank. This doesn't do much in the way of pressure regulation. Pretty much the only two settings are off and full blast. The next is the regulator valve that's attached to the torch. You use this to make fine adjustments to the pressure and effectively control the heat in the forge. Last is the trigger on the torch itself. It works like a grill lighter in that when you pull the trigger, a spark at the end ignites the fuel and there's a lock on the end of it that keeps the gas flowing without holding it down. When you're ready to start your forge for the first time, you want to make sure first of all that you're in a well ventilated area, you've got a fire extinguisher nearby, and the forge is isolated in front, back, and on both sides from flammable materials. Also, I'd suggest that you cover the propanos with a piece of pipe or conduit so that if hot material flies out of the forge, it will not land on the hose. To start your forge, through. begin by opening the valve on top of the tank. You'll hear a hissing sound as the hose pressure rises. Next, open the regulator valve on the torch. Then, pull the trigger to ignite the torch and gently push it into the forge. It takes about 10 minutes for the to a good working temperature. It is important when shutting the forge down to first turn off the valve on top of the tank and let the gas in the hose burn off completely so that it does not leak out into your shop. Well, I hope you found the information in this video helpful. This is a great little forge to help you get started in knife making and blacksmithing. Thank you for watching, and for more information on knife making, please visit my website, www.makingcustomknives.com. Thank you.